Hello YouTube, FSX Genius here and today we are going to do the flight school tutorial number three and in this one we are taking this Cessna C172 and we're going to fly from England to France so we're going across the English Channel now in order to do that we need to do an IFR or instrument flight rules flight because we're going to lose our visual reference points as we start to fly across the channel um, I am doing this completely um, as it comes to me I've not pre-planned any of this so we're going to go through this together you're going to learn at the same speed that I am because I have not flown a stock aircraft using stock FSX things for a long long time so we're going to do an IFR flight which is instrument flight rules we're going to do an ILS oh, uh, can't even speak we're going to do an ILS landing when we get there in other words an instrument landing system landing that's not full auto land don't get confused this just means that we will use radio transmitted information from the airport to guide us into the runway it'll guide us in laterally left and right and also vertically it will put us on the correct glide slope but we still need to land the aircraft manually we're going to be using the gps system and the flight planning system as well so there's a lot to do in this video and there's a lot of things where um, i may make mistakes if i do i apologize but we'll uh, we'll cover them as we get to them i'm going to try and record all of this in one go the video cuts that you will see will just be because it's a quite a, i mean it's a couple of hours to fly across the channel uh, so what, what I'll be doing is I'll be cutting the video and just, just coming back to interesting bits as we get to them. So we better get started. We've got the aircraft selected which is the Cessna C so C172SP Skyhawk. Uh, we're going to pick an airport and I think we're going to pick uh, Biggin Hill. Because I know that I've done this flight personally in a proper Cessna. So we better pick a parking area. So if we go to parking one ramp GA small, general aviation small and click OK. Uh, we're just going to make sure the time has been reset correctly by clicking on time and season then on reset then OK and we need to go to here to flight planner. OK so we're going to start at um, Biggin Hill so we'll select that and parking one general aviation small OK and we're going to fly to Le Havre which is, uh, the official name is Octville La Havre, so if we type in Octville, O-C-T-V-I-L-L-E, -L -E, and you can see the first one on the list, Octville La Havre in France, and that's our destination. So we've got Biggin Hill as our departure, destination is Octville, it's going to be an IFR flight, we're going to do low altitude airways, you're routing, direct GPS just means you're going to fly in a straight line from point A to point B, we don't want to do that, we want to follow some um, some waypoints so we're going to select low altitude airways and we're going to click on find route that's Biggin Hill up there that's La Havre down here and all of these diamonds on the way are our waypoints now these when we've saved all this will be programmed into our GPS and I'll show you shortly we don't want to cruise at 10,000 feet to be honest with you that's a little bit ridiculous for a Cessna let's put 4,000 feet and click OK it will ask you to save it and it saves it into your my documents flight simulator X files save next question do you want flight simulator to move your aircraft to the departure airport listed on the flight plan no we don't because we've already set our location here once all that's done click fly now so here we are at Biggin Hill Airport first thing I'm going to do is control full stop or control period if you're in America just to put the parking brakes on everything seems good okay um, flying tip your altimeter is setting correctly. On the uh, altimeter here you can see it's currently reading at about 400 feet. If we press B on the keyboard, resets our um, altimeter and it actually shows that we're now at 600 feet. So we're 600 feet above sea level at this particular airport. We're not going to do anything with the radio stacks or anything like that at the moment. Uh, down here on the uh, lights we're going to deal with those in a minute. So aircraft checks complete. Super. Quick look around the aircraft. Okay. Right. Uh, we need to speak to air traffic control to get clearance to fly our IFR instrument flight rules flight. Um, if we if we press Shift three first of all, this opens up the GPS system. Just going to resize that slightly. And you can't really see at the moment. There's a pink line extending away from the airport here. You'll see it more when we actually take off and turn to start following it. That pink line is the flight plan and we need to make sure that when they give us authorization to resume our navigation to follow our own flight plan that we're going to follow that pink line. How do we do that? Well, 
Up here at the top of the um, control dial to display you can see the NAV GPS indicator. When you click on this button here, NAV, on the autopilot, when autopilot's running, as it's set at the moment, NAV, it will follow VORs and NDBs that you've got set in your ADF and NAV1 and NAV2 radios. However, if you click on this and switch it to GPS mode, GPS is now illuminated, when we click on the NAV button, the autopilot will follow that pink line on your GPS, and that's what we're going to want you to do, but not just yet. Okay, back to um, talking to air traffic control. We're going to press F10 on our keyboard, and that puts us in the 2D cockpit mode. Shift 3 gets rid of the GPS. On the left-hand side here, you can see some icons. The second one from the left is a picture of a headset with a microphone on it. If we click on that, it opens the Biggin Hill air traffic control communications window. Now, I'm going to click on Tune to Biggin ATIS. ATIS, Air Traffic Information Service. It's going to start a voice, a recorded voice, telling you all sorts of airport information. It'll tell you that it's Information Alpha or Information Bravo or Information Charlie. That updates every time they update the ATIS. It goes to the next letter on the alphabet. So if you can say to somebody, I've got, I'm with Information Charlie, it means you've got the current or whatever Charlie was at the time information about the airport. It'll tell you the landing and departure runways, so it's a good idea to listen to those and write them down. It'll also tell you weather information about visibility and uh, all sorts of other things to do with Q&H and local barometric pressures. So I'm going to click on it and play it. Once I've finished playing that and I've written down the information, I'm going to then click on the uh, Tune to Biggin Hill ground button which will appear. So first let's click on this and listen to it. Biggin, airport information, Alpha, 1120, wind 272 at 9 So we've got lots of information there. The important stuff for us at the moment is that ILS runway 21 is in use. So we're now going to be taking off from runway 21 on a heading of 210. And also that uh, it's information alpha. So there you go, that's all been updated. That's nice and clear. And I've clicked on the uh, click um, tune to um, Biggin Hill Tower to get our clearance. So we're going to. I've got traffic turned on now so you can hear other aircraft, virtual aircraft, talking to the air traffic controller, which is quite good, but it's also annoying because I have to speak in between them. Right, we're going to request our IFR clearance now, so we're going to click on the IFR clearance. Biggin Tower, Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima, IFR to the Havre, ready to copy. Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima, is cleared to the Havre, airport has filed. Okay, we need to click on the readback acknowledge clearance. Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima, cleared the Havre airport as filed. Fly Watch runway what heading, here. climb and maintain 4000. Departure on 129.4, squawk 1354. Cessna 0, Papa, see that change? readback correct, contact ground on 134.8. Okay, so... She gave us uh, indications that we're going to be departing runway 21 and flying and maintain runway heading. So we're going to be flying a heading of runway uh, 210 uh, initial takeoff. She also told us to squawk 1354. Our transponder, we need to put a code in, and this, that's the squawk code. Now, because we're using the automated systems, when she's told us to squawk 1354, it's put it in for us automatically, which is great. And it's the same every time we. Uh, We'd, if we click on request taxi or we tune to begin or we click on to tune to the tower or whatever it will automatically update our radio frequencies for us as well so we don't have to worry about that we can purely concentrate on flame um, I'm going to go to a quick outside top down view ok this is runway 21 this is where we're going to be taking off from this is where we are at the moment so when we push our aircraft back we need to sort of make the tail go left so that we can then come out and follow the taxiways up here. 
Um, I'll show you how to do that, but we'll request the taxi clearance first. This is us here on the right hand side. Megan Round, Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima with X ray, ready to taxi IFR. Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 21, using taxiway Delta. Contact tower on 134.8 when ready. Okay, so we're going to acknowledge that taxi clearance. Taxi, hold short, runway 21, via taxiway Delta. And if I just turn my view slightly, so I'm facing away from the aircraft, if I, I'm going to click on this turn on progressive taxi button and watch the arrows that appear. So basically, Flight Simulator X has put in our path for us to follow to get us to where we need to go. Back into the cockpit. We've been told that we're going to fly a runway heading to 4,000 feet, fly and maintain 4,000 feet, so we can put 4,000 feet in on our altitude on the autopilot. We've also been told that we're going to fly a runway heading and we're taking off from runway 21, so we need to set 210 as our heading on the heading selector book, but again, we're not going to engage anything yet. We need to set our lights. Just close this for a moment. So beacon's already on, we're going to turn the taxi lights, nav lights and strobe lights on. We're not going to turn the landing lights on until we get to the runway threshold. So now we need to start our taxi, and to do that we hold to release the brakes, which is the full stop key, and hold down shift and press P for Papa. And you can see the aircraft has started to push back. Once we get clear of these aircraft on the left here, we can use either the number 1 or number 2 keys to make us turn left or right. So we're pretty much clear of that now. I'm going to press number 1 on the keyboard. And you can see that the aircraft has started turning tail left. You can see the arrows that we need to follow. And we press Shift P to stop the pushback. Okay, so we are ready to taxi to our holding point for runway 21. So we're going to put a little bit of power on. When we start moving, we're going to turn the aircraft using either our rudder controls or if you haven't got rudder pedals you need to make sure that in your settings you have uh, auto rudder enabled and then you can just use your joystick left and right in order to turn and we keep the speed nice and smooth and slow and as soon as possible we get onto one of these yellow taxi lines and follow that and follow the arrows Stage one of flaps because we'll need those for takeoff. Just remember during taxi to try and keep your speed fairly low. You don't want to be getting to the stage where it's becoming difficult to control. When we do uh, further tutorials and we start getting into the jets, it becomes really important is that because you simply can't make turns when you're travelling too fast. Ground on 134.8 when ready to taxi. 
threshold so we need to go back and open our ATC window again now you can see through the chat window there's another little Cessna Begin four and a half miles away so Look at this guy finish talking. So they've got clearance to land, uh, but we're going to stop here, put the parking brakes on, and we're going to click on request takeoff clearance, and it's going to get denied. So you can listen to this. Megan Tower, Cessna, November 760, Papa Lima at runway 21, ready for takeoff, IFR to Lava. Cessna, November 760, Papa Lima, hold short, runway 21, traffic is Cessna, Skyhawk on final. So we've got another aircraft which is coming in that's on final at the moment, so we'll watch him coming. Beach Quebec, Yellow Alpha, hold position, caution the departing Cessna Skyhawk. Hold position, Beach Quebec, Yellow Alpha. And you can see just up here now we've got that inbound Cessna that we're waiting for. He's just on his way in, and if we just look behind us. You can hear that we've got a Beechcraft Baron, which is this fella here, he's just taxiing up behind us as well and he's been told to just be cautious of the fact that we're going to be passing soon. Cessna, Golf Alpha, November, November, Foxtrot, is going missed. Oh, he's declared a missed approach. Contact again, approach on one two nine point four. So he's not landing now, he's going to fly over the top of us. So that's us. Cliff takeoff runway two one. So we're going to acknowledge takeoff clearance. And we're going to turn on our landing lights. And we're going to taxi onto the runway and take off because we've been told we are clear for takeoff. So release the brakes. A little bit of power. And as we always do, uh, we're going to accelerate down the runway up to about 70 knots. Pull back on the stick. As we start to climb, we're going to trim the aircraft so that we can maintain a 90 knot climb and start to reduce our flaps when we get past 80. All the stuff you learned in tutorials 1 and 2. Climb and maintain 4,000 and maintain when we're heading. So that's exactly what we're going to do. 60 knots. 70 knots, going to start pulling back on the stick. Get ourselves into a climb. We maintain about a 500 feet a minute climb just until our speed gets up, flaps up. Keep maintaining that 500 feet climb. to the autopilot, select altitude, Begin select tower, heading, and now the aircraft is taking Runway care two, of the climb and the heading, we're going to follow the heading. Foxtrot, Yankee, Quebec, Kilo, Alpha, taxi into position and hold. Position and hold, Beach, Quebec, Kilo, Alpha. Cessna, zero, Papa, Lima, contact, Begin, departure, on one, two, niner, point four. That's us, so I can always hand off. Going to one, two, niner, point four. Cessna, zero, Papa, Lima. I'm going to tune to begin departure now, that's what he's told us to do. Contact begin begin departure. departure. Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima, is climbing through 1,300 for 4,000. Cessna, November, November, Foxtrot. Contact, Heathrow, approach, on 119.725. 
Turn left 175, resume on navigation, plan 1,000. that which took back. Cessna, November, November, While they're talking, let's change our heading across to whatever it was she said. What did she say? 175. departure, Beach Foxtrot, Yankee, Quebec, Kilo Alpha is climbing through 1,300 for 13,000. Beach Foxtrot, Yankee, Quebec, Kilo Alpha, begin departure, roger. Altimeter, 3012, Beach, Quebec, Kilo Alpha, turn left, heading 150, Kumo, navigate, climb and maintain 13,000. We've got quite a lot of traffic on, so we're going to still need to acknowledge this instruction. So as soon as there's a gap, we're going to click on the Climb and maintain 13,000, Beach, Quebec, Kilo Alpha. Turn left, heading 175, resume on navigation, climb and maintain 4,000, Cessna, zero, Papa, Mima. Right, so I'm just going to close that window for a moment. Cessna, zero, Papa, Mima, traffic is 7 o'clock, 1 mile, 3,000, each king air, report them in sight. World travel, 1, 0, you are 2, 0, miles east, turn left, heading 2, minor, 0, descend and maintain 2,000, cleared ILS, runway 2, 6, left approach, maintain 2,000. So established on the localizer. Contact Tower on 124.225. Okay, I'm going to report that traffic inside. As soon as we get an Right, while they're talking, let's do this. She told us to resume own navigation. So you can see that we're coming towards intercepting this purple line now. So instead of being in heading select mode, I'm going to switch to nav mode. The aircraft will now turn, as you can see it is doing, and it's going to intercept this line, and then it's going to follow it. Alpha, have the traffic. Okay, quite chaotic there. Everything's just waiting to calm down a little bit. So, we took off, we turned onto a heading of 175 using, and we were in heading select mode and altitude select mode with our autopilot. Um, she then told us to resume on navigation once we'd completed the turn. So, we switched from heading select mode to nav mode and we're in nav mode but it's following GPS and not the nav radios so now we're following this purple line but you do need to be aware that they may give you a heading or a course alteration in which case you would drop out of that go back to heading mode and put in the heading that they give you to follow but we'll cover more of that on the approach I should imagine ok something else that you need to be aware of now you can see here on our airspeed it's actually started to drop because we're climbing at 700 feet a minute. Now as we get higher that becomes harder and harder to achieve so we're just going to reduce our climb rate to 400 feet a minute. And that's going to allow the um, speed to come back up because we're not cl climbing quite so steeply. We're going to shortly get a frequency change like you can hear happening on the background now. Okay, we've now levelled out at 4,000 feet and we're uh, maintaining about 110 knots. Now we're still in our sort of takeoff power settings, so I'm just going to reduce the power ever so slightly just so we're not maxing the engine out all the time. Contact Gatwick approach on 118.95. So we need to call contact Gatwick now, so we're just going to acknowledge that. Going 118.95. 
Time to give you an altimeter reading like that, 3012. Just hit B on your keyboard and it will just reset your own internal altimeter settings as well. Now, we're at 4,000 feet and we're pretty much in the clouds and we want to get a little bit above that just to make it a more pleasant trip for us. So I'm going to now request a new cruising altitude, so go to request a cruising altitude increase. And I want to go up another 2,000 feet, so request cruising altitude increase by 2,000. Gatwick approach, Cessna 0, Papa Lima, request 6,000. Cessna 0, Papa Lima, climb and maintain 6,000. Okay, so that's been improved, so we'll acknowledge that. Climb and maintain 6,000. Cessna 0, Papa Lima. We're going to dial up our altitude from here to 6,000. And you see the aircraft starts to climb. Again, keep your eye on the speed indicator. He's going to try and climb at 700 feet a minute again, which is probably a little bit steep at this altitude, so I'm going to knock that down to 500 feet a minute. And we've just levelled out now at 6,000 feet, and you can see the speed starts to increase a little bit, and when it gets up to about 110 knots, we're just going to back off the uh, power setting a little bit, just again, so that we're not... Totally maxing out the engine all the way. Cessna 0, Papa Lima, contact Shoreham approach on 123.15. Okay, so we're going to tune to Shoreham approach now, so I acknowledge the handoff. 123.15, Cessna 0, Papa Lima. Turn left heading. Contact Shoreham approach. Shoreham approach, Cessna November 760, Papa Lima, with you. Cessna November 760, Papa Lima. So, another altimeter reading, press B on the keyboard, it just make sure that you're using the same altimeter settings that everybody else is using. Right, so now that we're cruising at 6,000 feet, let's just open up the GPS, and you can see that we're going to get to this waypoint here, which we're following the pink line, which is great. When we get here, we're going to make a slight turn to the right, and that's all going to be controlled by the autopilot, because we are in nav select mode, and following the GPS. broken away from those clouds a little bit as well. You'll notice if we look outside the aircraft, we've still got our landing lights on and navigation lights, and that's quite normal. We would do that anyway, because we are below 10,000 feet and it's an IFR flight, so anything below 10,000 feet, you can easily leave your landing lights on. Now it really is a case of just following air traffic control instructions. So basically the video is going to end here, we're just going to keep on tuning to the next tower, to the next tower, to the next controller. And every time that we do that, uh, we're just going to acknowledge, tune to them and uh, talk to each controller as we get into their airspace. And you're going to resume the flight with me when we get to a stage where we're starting to talk to the French controllers who are going to start telling us when to descend. So I'm going to end the video here. So you're going to rejoin me at the point where we start getting information about descending towards the airport and we need to start planning for that uh, ILS instrument landing system approach to the runway. Cessna 0, Top and Lima, turn left and heading 155. Turn left and heading 155, expect vectors ILS, runway 23, approach. Cessna 0, Top and Lima. Cessna 0, Top and Lima. Contact London Center on 118.475. Okay, so you've joined us there. We've just been given some information. I'm going to read this back to you once I've acknowledged this handoff. 118.475 for Cessna 0, Papa Mima. Okay, we were contacted by um, the controller and told to turn left heading 155 and expect vectors ILS runway 23. So I'm making a note of that on my piece of paper that we're going to be runway 23. And we need to get the information for our ILS approach, but let's tune to London Centre first. London Centre, Cessna, November 760, Papa Mima, with you. 
Okay, so nothing to do at the moment. What I'm going to do is just going to minimise this window and I'm going to go to my Flight Sim Commander. Okay, and we want to go to um, Le Havre Airport, which I th think, well, let's just, we'll do it this way. Let's just go to uh, Shoreham. Doesn't matter which one we go to to begin with. Go to this airport window. Um, and we're going to go and find France. And we'll see if we can find Le Havre. There it is. And Octville Airport. So we found Le Havre in the um, airport information window here. Uh, Octville we've highlighted and we've been told we're going to be landing on runway 23 and we need to make a note of the heading for the ILS approach and also the ILS frequency. So it's 109.50 is the frequency and the heading is 225. Write those down. Let's go back to Right. Okay, we better just acknowledge that. Turn right heading one eight zero. So we need to turn right heading one eight zero. Okay, in order for us to make an ILS approach, we need to program into our NAV1 and NAV2 radios the ILS frequency. So here we go, this is NAV1 radio up here, and we need to put in the frequency we wrote down, which is 109.50. World travel, 3113. Turn right, heading 205. Resume all navigation. Climb and maintain the level. switcher button in the center here to put it into the active frequency. And let's do the same for the NAV2 radio as well. So 109.50. And press the switch button in the middle. So nav one active, nav two, are both set to one zero nine decimal five zero. As we're now flying on headings that are being given to us by the air traffic controllers, we can switch. We're not in nav mode anymore, so we can switch to nav on the nav selector up here rather than GPS so that when we do start our ILS approach when we switch back to the nav mode it will use these two radio frequencies for the ILS approach in the nav setting and we'll follow our path down to the runway using that. If we open up the GPS you can see that this was our planned route and when we were in nav mode we were following this pink line and we would have followed this all the way down but now we've been given a heading let's wait for this guy to stop talking now that we've been given a heading we're actually deviating away from that flight plan but you can see that we're heading in the same direction towards our ultimate goal which is here Okay, so I'll switch over. And we'll contact Paris Centre. Paris Centre, Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima, with you. Cessna, November 760, Papa, Lima, Paris Centre, Roger, Altimeter, 3009. As you can see now, if we look at the um, omni bearing uh, indicators here, you can see that the uh, vertical lines have sprung into life because we're in range of the ILS beacon for the Harv Airport on 109.50. And you can see that we're to the right of the runway as it stands on the moment. And being to the right, but we're not going to do anything about it. We've been told to follow a heading of 180, so that's what we're going to keep on following until uh, we get information otherwise. But it's just interesting that we are probably within range of that ILS approach now. 
so we will continue to monitor the air traffic controller and do exactly as he says. So that's for us. World travel, three nine or two five heavy. So we're gonna put three thousand on the altimeter. Descent to three thousand, and we need to keep control of the speed because we are going to start descending. And we do not want the speed to start climbing up ridiculously. Descend and maintain three thousand. So I'm just backing off the uh, power to the engine a little bit there. I want to maintain that sort of nice comfortable 110 knots. So another frequency change. I can understand that. Switch and tune. Doville approach Cessna November 760 Papa Lima is at 5,200 descending 3,000. Cessna November 760 Papa Lima Doville approach Roger Fox 3,000 See in the distance mainland France. Just remember when you do descend and you're using the autopilot to descend like I am, once you've dialed the speed down, you must keep control of your so once I've dialed the altitude down, you must keep control of the speed by reducing the power. Because when it starts descending it's going to start speeding up if you keep your power setting as it was previously. selector as well, that uh, the glide slope indicator has also come alive. So we're below the glide slope and we're to the right of the runway at the moment looking at these. If you remember, if we're to the right of the vertical line, we're to the right of the runway, to the left of it, we're to the left of the runway. And the glide slope indicator, if that's above horizontal, we're below the glide slope, and if it's below horizontal, we are above the glide slope. So we're where we want to be in terms of glide slope, we are below it. speed sorted out, so we're level at 3000, so we're going to back off the power until we get to um, about 90 knots, maybe 85 knots, just, just above flaps 1 speed. We're going to tune to the half tower. The half tower, Cessna, November 760, Papa, Mima is 17 miles northeast, inbound ILS, runway 23, approach. Cessna, November 760, Papa, Mima. So we've been told to fly straight in. Fly straight in, runway two three, Cessna zero, Papa Mima. Now I'm going to open this screen. As you can see here, runway two three is in this direction, and we're heading towards it on an intercept angle. What we need to do is we are currently flying a heading of two um, two zero zero. As this needle starts to move the, like it is doing now, we're going to switch out of heading into nav mode. And what will happen is the aircraft will begin its turn and line itself up with the approach to the runway. We also now 
we need to monitor the glide slope indicator because as soon as we see this begin to drop down towards horizontal before it gets there we need to press this button here which is the approach button so the aircraft's lined up laterally with the runway we're in nav mode in nav mode on this section here so it's using the navigation radios and we're now waiting for this line to start dropping down towards the center point and as it does we're going to hit the approach button let's bring the speed down to 80 knots and put stage one flaps on See the aircraft is sort of turning and lining itself so that it can approach the runway. Now because we're no longer in heading mode, we wrote down a heading for the runway which was 225. So we're going to select 225 on our heading selector here. So that's 22, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we need to put a heading of 225 onto our omni bearing approach. 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is just good management of your, um, your dials. It doesn't actually make much difference in uh, in this because we're locked onto the ILS beacon, but you would do that if you were flying VORs and MDVs. A bit more powering, the power's just dropping a bit too much there. I should say the speed is dropping a little bit too much. slope indicator has started to move now. So we're going to put it into approach mode. When this line gets level and horizontal, you'll notice that altitude goes out and the aircraft will start descending. So we need to manage speed for the approach at that stage. Glide slope indicator is now almost horizontal on the on the bearing dial and the altitude has just disengaged and now the aircraft will begin its descent along the glide slope and the autopilot will manage it so that we stay as close to the centre line of the runway as possible and we stay on the glide slope so these indicators should stay centred as they are now. Up ahead you can see the runway is just coming into view in the distance. information you can see that we're 7.3 miles away from the airport at about 85 knots. Speed's picking up so we're going to pull back the power a bit more down to about 70 knots now and put on stage 2 of flaps. 70 knots reached, stage 2 of flaps and bring the power in because the speed will plummet as the flaps come down. So we're going to maintain 70 knots with our power controller. Our actions now as we approach to land are going to be the following. 
as we're just above the runway threshold, we are going to disengage the autopilot completely using this button here in the bottom left of the autopilot panel. That will give us full control of the aircraft. We'll continue the descent, keep it steady, keep the speed the same. And just prior to touchdown, we're going to back off the throttles completely and flare for a nice touchdown. Well, that's the theory anyway. We shall see how it goes. Broken through that bit of mist again, and we can see the runway nice and clearly ahead of us. Speed's just picking up a little bit, so I'm just always managing the speed with the, uh, the power. You can even see on the on the bearing selector that's telling us that we're slightly above the glide slope. The autopilot will sort that out itself. an interesting approach because it is right on the coast on the top of quite a big cliff so you do get a lot of crosswinds so just something to watch out for as you disengage that autopilot and start flying it yourself just be aware of that stage of flaps on. So the Atlas system is doing a sterling job, it's uh, lining us up with the runway properly, it's also lining us up with the glide slope as you can see from the two red and two white lights. We're maintaining 60 knots through our power input settings. As usual, about this stage during the approach, we start to disregard the uh, precision lights and we're just aiming for the just after the hashes here. So now's a good time to disengage the autopilot. And I'm not touching anything, I just don't want to upset the approach. to exit the runway when able. So I'm just letting the, I'm not touching the brakes because it's a long runway and the uh, runway exits quite a bit further up here. If we go to the top down view you can see. So we're actually going to use a little bit of power just to keep us going. And you can see on the runway turn off there's a marker here. Once we turn off and we get to that marker we're going to stop. Instructions from the uh, ground controller. Back inside the cockpit. Now we can start to put our flaps up. Turn on our taxi lights. And begin our turn off. taxi as well so we've got some arrows to follow. Here 
here we are, we're at our parking spot. So, power off. And come to a stop. And that's it, we're done. So control period to put the brakes on. And that is the end of our flight. There's a lot to take in. The ILS approach is quite difficult to master, but once you do get the uh, idea that you're going from a heading and you're going to wait until those indicators on your direction selectors start to move and then you switch to back to nav mode and then you're going to be switching to uh, the approach mode once you see the glide slope indicator start to move. Once all of those things become second nature to you, you'll find that the ILS approach is a very useful tool to have. In the next tutorial we're going to be looking at jets and we're going to be taking this to a whole new level. We're going to be looking at checklists, uh, navigation, full ILS approaches using ATC and everything else. Uh, but until then this is a good one to practice so thank you for watching and I'll see you for tutorial number four in uh, about a week's time. FSX Genius, thank you very much. Bye bye.